back in time. Lady in the dark. You guys saw it. You guys saw the original. <laughs> People are probably are younger than me, by the way, right? Uh, Lady in the Dark opened up the album in 1941 with a book by Moss Hart, music by Kurt Vile, and lyrics by Ira Gershwin. The show had 60 cast members, 35 stagehands, and 20 musicians. Uh, it was reportedly the first show on Broadway that, at that time, that played to standing room at every single performance. So we do this, we celebrate underappreciated musicals, uh, whether or not they were underappreciated in their time. Certainly Lady in the Dark is underappreciated today. Every summer stock's doing Lady in the Dark this year. Uh, okay, so Moss Hart wanted to write a play that honestly depicted psychoanalysis, which he was a huge fan of. And he originally thought of it as a play, but then realized that the show could reach more people as a musical. Musicals are a good way to say important things. That's from Marilyn. <laughs> so, okay, so... Gotta get it in somewhere. I think she likes Marilyn. Uh, so, Lady in the Dark was about Liza. Uh, the neurotic editor of a woman's magazine, played by Gertrude Lawrence, who goes to a psychiatrist to sort out her life. The dreams she reveals become the musical numbers of the evening. Uh, the show was one of the very first to be billed as a musical play rather than a musical comedy, and the New York Times noted that Lady in the Dark combined the elements of a play, musical comedy, and review. Brooks Atkinson said that the innovation was a show in which the music rises spontaneously out of the heart of the drama, evoking rather than embellishing the main theme. He noted that the idea wasn't new since Cabin in the Sky and Pal Joey had been moving in that direction, but that Lady in the Dark carried this idea, the idea of the script and the score relating to each other directly, close to perfection. Uh, the last line of his review was, something of genuine promise is stirring. <laughs> Now, cool. I love this because it's Gertrude Lawrence in two different production shots, same pose. <laughs> Although Caleb did point out that the book is in a different hand, <laughs> conveying a different emotion. <laughs> Gertie, um, she could sell us some. Uh, Moss Hart, I know. Uh, Moss Hart went to psychoanalysis to deal with his homosexuality, which was actually not a secret in the theater community. And many thought that there was a gay subtext to the show, um, and in the plot, Liza keeps finding excuses not to marry until she finally falls for a Hollywood hunk. But she finds he is not her ideal mate, and she admits her real love for one of her fellow employees, who has always challenged her and respected her and been her equal. As Ethan Morton said, if that isn't a coming out parable, then Cole Porter wrote Showboat with Herbert Fields. <laughs> That's my Ethan Morton impression. That's a really good Ethan Thank Morton you. impression. Um, oh my god, I just got horrified that like he was here like that time when the Lex Diamond director was here. <laughs> oh god. Uh, moving on. Uh, Lady in the Dark didn't have many things that all musicals had at the time. There was no overture, no reprises, and no comic second couple. The set revolved into a new setting when the dream sequences began, so there were no in-one bits in front of the curtain. Song and dance were given great weight in the story, and the structure of the show undeniably changed musical theater. Ethan Morton. This is so cool. That's what was playing at the time. I love Sorry that. Sorry to see Louisiana Purchase. Yeah. Corner Look, you could go see Tobacco Road for 53 cents. It's pretty cool. Bargain. I lost my place. Okay, so now we're back to Ethan Morton. Uh, Ethan Morton. <laughs> I gave you all the Ethan Morton lines. Called Lady in the Dark, the most famous American musical that doesn't get performed a lot. Preach, not oh, preach. preach. I was preach. like, preach? Leave some preaches coming from this. I love it. Keep the preaches. And he and most historians all agree that this is because of Gertrude Lawrence, who is irreplaceable in the lead role. Now, Gertrude Lawrence was one of musical theater's greatest heroines, and Broadway couldn't get enough of her. When the show was in rehearsals out of town prior to Broadway, the gossip column in the New York Times reported, Probably lacks importance in the general state of the world, but in one of the dream sequences of Lady in the Dark, Gertrude Lawrence wears a red wig. <laughs> That's like the most Broadway world you could get in 1941. <laughs> also, like, I'm obsessed. There's a chapter, there's a section of Ethan Morton's book where he's like, Ethel Merman could sing and Gwen Verdon could dance and this person could do that. Um, and Gertrude Lawrence couldn't do any of that, but she was the greatest star of all of them. And it's just like, it's the most amazing. It's amazing. I couldn't quote it directly because it's that good. Uh, Lady in the Dark played at the Alvin until it had to close for the summer because there was no air conditioning, uh, and then it went on a tour. Gertrude Lawrence wrote, Gertrude Lawrence herself, while traveling around the country with a production the size of, the, of Lady in the Dark is not without its problems in wartime, it is also a lot of fun. In every town, there is war work to be done. We do Red Cross, Canteen, Mobile Transport, Bond Sales, USO Concerts. It's a great Gertrude Lawrence impression. 
Um, <laughs> she, <laughs> just jokes. Um, she notes, she notes, Gertie notes, that the company never took night trains, leaving the Pullmans for more vital wartime usages. They also always ate before they got on board, leaving the dining car for servicemen. Unlike other tours, no one asked for the best hotel in town, only the one closest to the theater, as taxi cabs were a rare occurrence during wartime. <laughs> That's a slide I thought was hilarious when it was like late at night and I was creating the slideshow. It's just like Gertrude Lawrence and uh, Illustrated Train. But... <laughs> See, it's still funny. It's still funny. Okay. Uh, Lawrence said, during our tour, this is fascinating, I love this. During the tour, uh, 10 members of the company were called into army service. Needless to say, we were very proud of them, but sorry to see them go, and we gave a farewell party for each one of them. One of them was George S. Irving, by the way, which is cool. Uh, fortunately, we were able to replace them without detriment to the show, and we have a company fund which sends them variety each week. <laughs> it's like a romanticized version of wartime. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. It's... I don't know. It's what she said. I don't know. War. What is it good for? Um, in the show, Liza's big number is my ship. When her editor finishes a musical phrase of it, she realizes that they belong together. Here to sing, my ship, is Sam Eskandani. I want one photo of me. <laughs> we got it? Someone just yawned. <laughs> My ship has sails that are made of silk. The deck is trimmed with gold. With jam and spice, there's a paradise in the hole. Oh uh -huh. 